Beautiful people, sorry, part two. So I, it's left off at Isaiah chapter 59, verse six. Their webs shall not become garments because they use witchcraft. They do cobweb witchcraft to do all kinds of fashion and of evil against people. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. They try to hide their wickedness with their witchcraft. Their works are works of iniquity. The acts of violence is in their hands. James chapter 2 verse 18. Yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith with all thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. Now, John chapter 10 verse 32. Emmanuel answered them, many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? He said. Now, the first book of Timothy chapter 6 verse 18. That they do good that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing willing to communicate. But you know, in this day and age, people have terrible communication skills. They think, you know, conversation is argument. You be having a totally, you know, calm, collective conversation with them and they want to argue, they want to gaslight, they want to manipulate, they don't want to take accountability, they want to play dumb. Um, there's people out here have horrible communication skills and don't know how to express themselves without getting angry, without getting aggressive, without trying to curse you out, without calling you a bitter name. Um, these people have horrible communication skills and they're unwilling to communicate. You know, they stonewall people. Now, John, Psalms chapter 94, verse 16 who will rise up for me against evildoers or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? So we know there's two people, there's two type of work out here. People who are doing good works and people who are doing works of iniquity, evil works. And you'll know them by their fruits. Now, Psalms 92 verse 9, for lo thy enemies, O Lord, for lo thy enemies shall perish. The workers of iniquity shall be scattered. So there's workers of iniquity. And what are they doing? Hide, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. They're out here plotting and scheming and planning on people. They operate in secret. Now Psalms 59 and 2, deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. They're bloody, they're bloodthirsty, they're always seeking in the sin blood. Now, Job chapter 34 verse 22, there is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves because they're doing all their dark arts and their wicked works in secret. But God said there's nowhere they could hide themselves because there's nothing hid that shall not be made known. Remember, God's going to lift the veil and all the stuff they covered up. So by the fruits, you shall know them. And it's either it's life or death, truth or lie, good or evil, righteousness or unrighteousness, blessings or curse. So you know them. Wherefore, Matthew 7 and 20, wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Now, Revelations 2 and 19, I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Now, you can't say you're for God this is the part where he's asking you, are you for God or against him? Because these people, this goes back to Zion. And this talks about Christ as well, because when Christ walked the earth, he was the chosen king for the children of Israel. Right? But what did they do to him when he walked the earth? Luke chapter 23, verse 37. And saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And then Christ Emmanuel, then said Christ, Emmanuel, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his ragman and cast lots. They even took Christ's garments and put witchcraft on his garments. They cast lots. What do you think casting lots means? That's what they did to Christ. And he said if they persecuted him and they did these things to him, they'll do it to you. Luke chapter 23, verse 35. And the people stood, behold, stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derated him, saying, 
He saved others. Let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. So you can't say you're for God and you're against his chosen people who he chose. You can't because it's your... It's either you're with God or you're against him. There's no trot in the fence. And this is what we're breaking down right now. I'm almost done, but this is the important part of the message. I saved the best for last. He saved others. Let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. So anybody's like, they're fighting God's touch not is anointed and is chosen. They're fighting against God. They're against God. They can't say they love God and are doing that. Amen. Luke chapter 23 verse 36 and the soldiers also mocked him coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying if thou be the king of the Jews save thyself and a subscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew this is the king of the Jews right that's what they did to him and they had full awareness of the scriptures of Christ but when what did they say they said crucify him didn't they say to crucify him? Say Matthew chapter twenty, chapter two, verse two, say, "Where is he that's born king?" The the wise men, when they went to see Christ, they saw his star in the east, and they went to go worship. Right, but foolish people. They said to crucify him when when he was grown, but when he was born, what happened? This, the wise men, remember the three wise men that came with myrrh, frankincense, gold? Where is he that's born king of the Jews? They knew he was the king of the Jews. The wise people knew he was the king of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. But his own people, Luke chapter 23, verse 38, and a subscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin, saying, this is the king of the Jews. The, then the, Mark chapter 15 verse 12 and Pilate answered and said again unto him what will you, what will you then that I shall do unto him whom you call the king of the Jews when the chief priests thereof therefore an officer saw him they cried out saying crucify him crucify him Pilate said unto him take ye him and crucify him for I find no fault in him and they know he was delivered up because of envy. Now, John chapter 9, verse 22. There were people at that time, they knew Christ was Christ. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed, are, agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. So people knew he was Christ. But because they feared what other people would think of them, they cared about the validation of p others. They were cowards. Jo John chapter 19, verse 15. But they cried out anyway with him, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Now, Matthew chapter 27, verse 31. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off of him and put his own ragman on him and led him away to crucify him. But they knew who their king was. Psalm chapter 9, chapter 2, verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Now, you can't say you're for God and against him. Against who he chose. It's either you're with him or you're against him. That's why he said the queen, what they did. What did they say to do, happen to Zion? They said to what to do to Christ, their king that God chose. They said crucify him. What did they say to Zion? They said Micah 4 and 8. Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say let her be defiled and let our eyes look upon Zion. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves in the floor. Arise and thrust, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thy horn iron, and I will make thy house brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. You see from Micah 4 and 11 to 13, he said, they, they, they said, let daughter Zion be defiled. 
But God said they don't know the thoughts of the Lord. Neither understand they his counsel. For he's going to gather them as sheep into the floor. And we know about God talking about the sheep into the floor. He'll gather them and burn them up. We know about that. If you read the Bible, you can Google it. But they said to, to crucify Christ, the king that God chose. And they said to defile Zion, the queen God chose. With 2 Nephi chapter 10 verse 16 to 17 Wherefore he that fights against Zion Both Jew and Gentile Both bond and free Both male and female shall perish For they are they who are the whore of all the earth For they who are not for me Are against me says our God For I will fulfill my promises Which I have made unto the children of men That I will do unto them while they are in the flesh So any person that God has chosen And any person God has made a promise with you fight, you're against him. If you're fighting against them, you're fighting against God. You're not for God. So you can't say you're for God and fighting against who he chose. You're supposed to be for those who God's for and against those who's against God and against who God's for. It's There's no in-between with God. You cannot straddle the fence. And that's what he wants me to let you know. Don't be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees in ancient days who who were like that with Christ because it's, he's showing them that when he picks somebody this is how they act now Matthew chapter 7 and 23 and then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity because they're out here doing evil to the people God said touch not his anointed and do his prophets no harm the people God has a covenant with. The people God has a promise with. The people God chose for something. So they're standing against God. Because that's what God stands for. What he chose. You understand? So it's either you. He said it to you. For they who are not for me are against me. Says our God. And you know he who that's not for him. They gather abroad. He told you, if they're not for you, they're against you. Even Christ told them, he that's not for them scattered is not with him. So if it's not, if you're not for Christ, you're against him. He told you, he that's not with him scatters abroad. He that's not with them is against him. So you can't say you're for God and not for what God wants. Stay blessed, beautiful people.